Welcome to your UA Light Celestial Insight. Hello, dear Pisces. So Pisces, I have to tell you, even with a different configuration of card decks, your loving ancestor advice reading for the year 2023 absolutely mirrors the message that came through for you via the cards and the stars in the Jupiter and Aries year ahead reading as well. So in that reading, one of the things that I mentioned is that Given that Jupiter has traveled through your sign and is now going into Aries, which rules, you know, the second house of finance and career and um, choices around your personal values and your self-worth, this transit would essentially bring you situations this year that really test this notion of, you know, whether you can have it all and do it all. And this notion of balance versus ambition and increasing and even excessive wealth, right? That 2023, courtesy of this transit in particular, would bring you situations where you're faced with choices between making a lot of money, continuing to surpass and crush glass ceilings and achieve success versus how it might require sacrifice or make you have to confront and interrogate what you truly value, right? And do some sort of cost benefit analysis. And so What's being revealed in this reading is that children and childbirth will essentially be at the heart of any sort of dilemmas related to this notion of balance, ambition, um, making choices between, you know, what you value, what you might have to compromise, and even decisions that you make in your romantic and even business relationships, right? And one thing that I've noticed about Pisces is that children in childbirth tend to play a very sort of spiritual and sort of mystical role in the lives of Pisceans. And that's really coming through here. With this spread, what I did was I pulled cards related to this question of who might your sort of ancestor guides be that are coming through in this reading and how might you know them. And the cards that came out were the uh, Knight of Cups in reverse and the Seven of Pentacles, right? And so trigger warning, um, this generally suggests the spirit of a baby boy, a son, um, your child, maybe a child that is living, uh, maybe a child that is no longer living um, or that was given up, right? Or even a brother, right? And in terms of what sort of karmic cycles or problems your loving and guiding ancestors might be helping you to resolve this year. The cards that came out were the guilt card, which is the eight of swords, and then the rebel in reverse, which is the emperor in reverse. And then um, we also have the panchamama card, right? And so Similarly to that other reading, I got in general these sort of scenarios where there may be a dilemma around being guilty by association, Um, situations in your lives where maybe you have tried to reform someone who is a bit of a bad boy, right, or... um, have to sort of face this idea or this quality of you being a reformist, 
right? And essentially taking on these tasks of trying to reform and change people and give people chances, right, at redemption, despite what they might show you, right, in terms of their shadows and maybe their inability to change or lack of a desire to change, right, and where you may be faced with these questions of needing to walk away. I'm also getting the scenario of mother's guilt from this card, right, and in general, I'm just getting that this Pisces reading is generally for mothers, right? Um, and so mother's guilt, right, from maybe working and having to be away from children and maybe even having to confront a situation where you have guilt around a potential decision to stay in or leave a relationship with a co-parent or to even keep or potentially abort a baby. And maybe there are fears around being a single parent or facing judgments about decisions. Maybe fears around juggling parenthood and career success. And these were all of these sort of like streams of insight, channeled messages, scenarios that just came through when I pulled all of the cards, right? And so these are just all of the different ways that this could be applying or relating to those of you in the Pisces Collective. And um, there's just this message here, not to let guilt inform any of your decisions, right? For some of you who recently gave birth, I'm getting that it was the spirit of a long lost child being returned to you. Um, and now you're being faced with a decision to end a relationship with a co-parent of the child. And that may be causing you some sort of compounded guilt um, around how, you know, this decision to leave the co-parent, you know, could change the quality of life for the child, right? Um, and you're being told not to feel any guilt in this situation and in general not let guilt inform the decision if you need to walk away. For others, you know, this is a surprise pregnancy with someone who maybe you never had long-term intentions with and you're faced with this decision similarly. And I'm getting that from this bottom row of cards, right? We have, um, I mean, as you can see in the spread, we have the release the past card. We have the learn to say no. We have walk away. The release the past is definitely related to this card about guilt um, and, you know, childbirth. And then right below it, we have the Ace of Cups, right? And it's like, there's definitely something in general about how the children that Pisceans have, they generally tend to be like, they're sort of like spiritual soulmates in a way who are meant to teach Pisces these really important lessons in life um, as their sort of like life companions. And I'm seeing that, you know, that is factoring in this reading. And um, I got the sort of message about there potentially being a surprise pregnancy for some people um, through this bottom row of cards where we have the judgment in reverse, we have the Ace of Cups, the nine of cups right and it's like this ace of cups is about being blessed with the child and then dealing with this decision of whether or not you need to abandon give up or even abort or even keep the child right as you are on this journey where you've been you know kind of building a career and this sort of nine of cups life for yourself right um being someone who's really successful um, as an entrepreneur um, someone who is independent etc. Um, maybe someone who is um, has maybe just entered into a relationship or never had these intentions to build a long-term relationship with someone or maybe where it's not a, a legally solidified relationship by marriage, all of these kinds of things, right? With this three of pentacles and the king of wands are kind of coming through. And then we have the knight of swords and 
the um, Eight of Pentacles in reverse here, right? That are kind of coming through as like this unexpected arrival, right? This unexpected arrival that sort of comes between, you know, this work that you were doing, right? This career and all of these ambitions that you were building some sort of craft, you know, whatever it is that you do in life. And so, you know, it's about this decision, this judgment call that you have to make, definitely being, you know, some sort of important spiritual <laughs> test for you in some sense, right? Related to some of these things that I've mentioned. And it's like, in that Jupiter reading, it, it's like, Jupiter and Aries coming through the second house was about, you know, situations most likely being brought that test this notion of balance versus ambition and even excessive wealth. Choices between making a lot of money and continuing to surpass and crush glass ceilings and achieve success versus how it might require sacrifice or make you confront and interrogate what you value and do cost benefit analysis, right? And in that reading, I, I definitely saw something about a relationship that there would be a decision in a love relationship, um, career, parenting, and money. You know, these questions of what do you value? What will you have to compromise? What should you say no to? What will your choices say about your values? Are your choices aligned with your highest self-worth and your values? Um, these are essentially all of the questions that I'm getting you will be faced with this year. And then also, you know, this lesson about the limits of your ability to essentially transform others, right? To transmute others' darkness and karma for them and how, you know, how that can backfire sometime, right? And that's what I'm also getting here again with the rebel card being in reverse and then this learn to say no card and this walk away card that is right next to it, you know, and the release to pass. So it's like, there's definitely something about having to make an important decision and with whatever decision that you make, just not letting guilt inform it and having to, I guess, do some deep, you know, sort of spiritual work around guilt and about what it is that you really want. And um, yeah, in terms of the magic making cards and the additional sort of advice, we have the tree of life card here. It says true wisdom and making good choices in life. And then also one enchanted evening, the perfect night. And then it says, Felix Felicitas, the power symbol to create lucky serendipitous events, right? That definitely all lines up, right? Where for some of you, it is this, this sort of surprise that happens after, you know, an enchanted evening, right? A perfect night. Um, it could also even be about you know, having an important conversation where you are voicing your concerns to a partner um, or co-parent and perhaps them trying to change your mind and woo you, right, with an enchanted evening. Um, and in general, this is definitely asking you to just take a holistic look at all of the details and your visions around what it is that you want, you know, to not let your ambitions or any decisions around having a baby or not um, be informed by guilt or by anyone else's desires, right? I want to read this Pantra Mama card to you. Okay. This is the first time that I have seen it come out in a reading. Okay, so Pisces, 
Pentamama represents the unconditional love that the earth has for all her children, including the stones, the plants, the animals, and humans. She is the goddess of earth, also known as Gaia, who pervades all creation in our planet. Thanks to Panchamama, our timeless soul can experience life in a biological body. The joy and pain we taste during our brief time on earth are invitations to discover the boundless love of Panchamama. Upright, this card talks about how you are a child of the earth and how now is the time to eat right, love right, and be joyous, regardless of the circumstances you may find yourself in. Be grateful for your life, your body, and all that nourishes you. Panchamama invites you to relish each breath, embrace your joy and your pain equally, and discover love through both. Let Panchamama know how much you appreciate all her blessings with an act of service such as planting a tree, helping save an endangered species, or protecting the ocean. Hmm. This is very interesting because in that last reading, I definitely, um, there was also definitely a message about reconnecting with your body and rebuilding, you know, a relationship with your body. And for some of you, that is after having, you know, gone through childbirth and having to, you know, recreate this relationship with your body and, and your center and sort of reckon with the experience and how it <laughs> sort of truly, truly gifted you with this sort of deeper understanding of your connection to Panchamama, right? The earth, the divine mother and all that is. And this sort of new sense of unconditional love, right? And I think in general, there can be, I think what's important is to still be led by love, right? And to know that there can be love in any decision, whatever it is that you decide here, whatever it is that you choose. Um, with Jupiter being in that second house, it's like, with this power symbol, right? It's like you can still create luck, serendipitous events. Like no matter what, you are so loved by the divine that it can and will all work out. It's just a matter of you facing what it is that you truly want. What you know love can and should look like for you this lifetime. Right, and if that is your career, if that is not sacrificing your body again, if that is welcoming a new life again or for the first time, if that is saying no and walking away from relationships that you know are not conducive to the healthiest kind of love for you or for any children in your life, right? Know that it is okay. <laughs> and so to round out this reading, I'm going to read an angel number message that came through for you. These messages came through for all of the readings, and they are an additional way that I channel um, messages in general from the divine, and they are coming through as these sort of additional loving and guiding messages from your loving ancestors who are showing up in this reading. All right, and they're just going to round out and wrap up this reading for you. And there are actually two that came through for you, so I want to read those. And yours was 222, right? 222 is absolutely master numbers, the master builder number. And um, it's definitely about ancient wisdom, transformation, um, trust, encouragement, success, adaptability, diplomacy, and cooperation. 
<laughs> balance and harmony, faith and trust, selflessness, and aligning with your, deli- your divine life purpose and soul mission. It has to do with balance. It has to do with manifesting miracles and new auspicious and timely opportunities. And the sort of loving advice with this number is about encouraging you to take a balanced, harmonious, and peaceful stance in all areas of your life. The message is to keep the faith and stand strong in your personal truths. And it tells you that everything will turn out for the best in the long term. Wow. Do not put your energies into negativity. Be aware that all is being worked out by spirit for the highest good of all involved. And it's also reminding you to keep up the good work you're doing as the evidence of your manifestations are coming to fruition. It's a message of faith and trust from your angels and to remember that nothing happens by chance and everything happens for a reason. Just maintain a positive attitude and everything will have positive results and you will receive abundant blessings and divine right timing. Okay, the other angel message that came through was 433. Okay, so I'm going to read that one for you as well. Okay, so it's a powerful message that you are fully supported, surrounded, and loved by the angels, ancestors, and higher beings of the spiritual realms. You have toiled long and hard, and your angels want you to know you have successfully manifested prosperity and abundance into your life. Be open to receiving your well-earned rewards and blessings and maintain a positive attitude and outlook to continue manifesting positive abundance into your life. Use your natural positive attributes to uplift others as you purposefully work towards attaining your goals and desires, whatever they may be. Be flexible and loving and bring joy to the lives of others as when you live your life with love and light, you manifest positive energies and auspicious circumstances into your life. Be a blessing to others and you will feel blessed in return. And this number also suggests a timely opportunity or situation will bring many pieces of the puzzle together for you. And you have learned many invaluable lessons and have been patient and determined in your efforts. And so now is the time to reap your rewards. Yes, these definitely speak to how, you know, these situations can absolutely vary, you know, for many of you. Um, but that the overarching sort of loving advice is the same. And so I also want to read what the uh, three sort of advice cards have here too, in case these, you know, resonate and confirm, you know, certain decisions for for some of you, right? And it's like, you're going to know what choice to make for you, Okay. So the release the past card says, releasing the past does not mean that we forget, nor does it mean that if something bad happens that this was okay. It means that we make a personal choice to no longer allow our history to dictate and shape our life, both now in our present time and in our future. Yes, so I was definitely getting that as a clear message that no matter what it is that you choose, Just do not let old um, habits or the past or even guilt, right, dictate your choices. Okay, so learn to say no says saying no is an act of love. When we say a healthy no to an abusive situation, whether this is in response to another person or to ourselves, we are setting limits and establishing healthy boundaries. A healthy no is saying yes to life. Give yourself permission to say no. Okay, and walk away. This one says, walk away from this situation. When we face a challenging or unhealthy situation, it can be hard to let go and move on. Sometimes we stay in the hope that someone else will change 
or perhaps we are so fearful of the unknown that we remain in the safety of a known and yet toxic situation. This car validates your entitlement to leave. Definitely go and look at that Jupiter in Aries reading because that definitely came through very strongly in what it is that I was channeling about a love relationship. Um, so yeah, <laughs> and in general about this sort of quality that Pisces can have sometimes where it's like, you know, you do more harm actually trying to do others work for them or, and to reform people, um, you know, when they're not actually making the efforts to do that work for themselves, it's like you can see the light in others so much to the point where you will overlook their shadows and the very clear signs of a toxicity, you know, that um, is there and that can only change when the person makes the change, it's like you, there's, there's a limit, you know, to your ability to transmute others' darkness and karma for them. And, you know, sometimes this can backfire. This is one of the things I said in that message, like it can backfire and it can tarnish your light and your karma for actually being an enabler an accomplice and even a complicit bystander, right. To, to, you know, these, when you stand by others, right, who are toxic, right? And um, these things can, you know, tarnish your own legacy and, and even mess with your money, right? So definitely um, take a look at that reading in case there were also some other tidbits in there that apply. And I hope that all of this loving advice and, <laughs> and psychic insight is helpful for you that 2023 continues to be a really beautiful year for you it will um as you continue to walk in love and um do good work in the world all right so take care subscribe and come back for more <laughs>